last time we started looking at a uh, general system of n degrees of freedom okay um, a natural system which we had defined last time and we assume that there is a point of equilibrium and we were expanding the terms in the lagrangian the kinetic energy term and the potential energy term around that point of equilibrium okay now this point of equilibrium could be stable could be unstable and that information will be encoded in uh, the potential energy matrix right the uij term uh, the uijs which we wrote down last time and then uh, we did some uh, truncation in the lagrangian so we approximated i mean we did a taylor expansion around the origin where we had chosen uh, the point of equilibrium okay and then we truncated the the series in such a manner that the equations of motion that you get are linear and that was uh, left as an exercise to be done by uh, by the viewer which maybe i can do once maybe in, uh, in the next lecture and then we wrote down uh, lagrangian with under that approximation so let me write down by summarizing what we did and then we proceed from from there so we are um, looking at oscillations okay so recap first we are looking at a system of n degrees of freedom okay and then we assume that there is a uh point of equilibrium of the system and we have chosen that to be at the origin okay we also put the potential energy to be zero there that's the choice we made so u at zero by this zero i mean all the coordinates take value zero has been chosen to be zero and the fact that that point is a point of equilibrium meant that the derivatives del u over del q i they vanished there that's what we derived as a condition okay and under linear approximation equation for the equations of motion of motion i believe that you have already uh, done that exercise we wrote down that the lagrangian becomes the following it becomes half t i j q i dot q j dot and you have summation over all i and j running from 1 to n and then you have minus half u i j q i q j okay where t i j is and u i j is they are constants now we have already expanded about about the origin and we also know that our t sometimes i'll write t and u to mean these two these two things or maybe let let me just write down t i j and u i j are symmetric are real symmetric matrices okay that's good now also recall um that i did not make any assumption about this uij remember this was um appearing as a second order term in qis right the first term was u of 0 and the second term 
involved del u over del qi this one which went to zero and this was the first non zero term okay so depending on what these coefficients are doing what values they take the point could be a stable equilibrium unstable equilibrium or or whatever okay so th that information is coded in here so as far as this uh, where we stand i'm not necessarily making an assumption that i am near a stable equilibrium this could very well be a uh, unstable e equilibrium point okay but for now we will pre pretend as if we are near a stable equilibrium and proceed and later we'll also talk about unstable e equilibrium okay um let's see okay so i was saying last time before closing that the moment we see these two quadratic forms so as you might uh, have already noticed that we have two quadratic forms here okay and immediately we want to ask whether these two quadratic forms uh whether we can say th whether these are positive definite or no such uh, property can be ascribed okay so we want to know about um, their uh, definite properties now what i'm going to show is which is quite easy that the first form first quadratic form this one is a positive definite quadratic form okay and it's quite easy to understand what do i mean by saying it's a positive definite quadratic form it means that no matter what these column vectors and these row vectors see this you can write as a a row so you can write as a t as a matrix a row from left and a column from right right that's what you can do so what we are really asking is whether this form takes a positive value no matter what row and columns you choose i mean the row and the columns are related because they are transpose of each other if it is never zero and if it is always positive then it will be a positive quadratic form and that's what i'm going to argue which is uh, fairly simple uh, maybe i can write down so we are looking at the quadratic form q uh, t i j q i dot q j dot that's what we are talking about and you have a summation over i and j okay now remember what how you arrived at this term this gives you the i mean th this was the kinetic term in the lagrangian to begin with and you have done some approximation and this is what you have now if this represents kinetic energy then if these velocities are not zero okay if your system is really if your coordinates are really uh moving they have some velocity then the kinetic energy has to be positive right no matter what uh those velocities are because it's a kinetic energy remember kinetic energy is this it's a sum of all these positive numbers and that has what has that and th uh, this is what has become this okay so no matter what qi dots you take this is always going to give a positive value so um this is positive for all non vanishing qi dots right the only way this will give you a zero is if the velocities of all of them all of the generalized coordinates are zero that is the only case in which you can say the kinetic energy is zero but then that's not uh, how you talk about a quadratic form you talk about uh non zero vectors okay so whenever your vector qi dot is non zero 
this will be positive so i have argued that this quadratic form is positive definite and this is very very nice because the moment i can say this that this is positive definite i go back to uh, what we were talking about um, simultaneous diagonalization of two quadratic forms okay and see that i will be able to not only put this in diagonal form with unit coefficients but also simultaneously diagonalize the quadratic form corresponding to the potential term okay so by this i mean i can simultaneously simultaneously diagonalize or let's say simultaneously put the two quadratic forms as sum of squares sum of squares so my lagrangian now becomes um the following okay so my lagrangian becomes the following okay so uh, the fact that i can put as sum of square means that i will be able to do a transformation and go from the small q's here to some new set of uh, coordinates let's call them capital q i's okay such that the following holds true so sum of squares so first one will be with unit coefficients i'll put half anyway outside that i can retain uh, there is no problem so i'm saying this piece this piece is being put as sum of quadratic uh, uh, squares with unit coefficients i now there is no j because these are squares q i dot square 1 2 and your n degrees of freedom minus half okay so under this approximation which we have made uh, the linear, linear approximation i have been able to write down my lagrangian using a new set of generalized coordinate capital q's in this form and this is very very nice result do you understand why this is very nice what we have achieved let me um put it slightly differently let me write it in this in this way i okay 1 to n half q i dot square minus half lambda i q i square do you appreciate why this is so nice you see what it means is that my system upon choosing the this new set of generalized coordinates appears as a collection of one dimensional systems which are not interacting with each other let me write it down this means we have cast our system um now this is not a nice sentence let's say upon choosing 
qi qi is as our new generalized coordinates okay uh the system has become a set of n one dimensional non interacting systems uh has become a set of n non interacting one dimensional systems and why are they not not interacting because there are no terms uh, which couple qi to qj so there is no cross term between qi and qj so there is nothing like q1 and q2 are couple so when you are writing down the equations of motion for qi it will not get any contribution which will have a q uh, j appearing in it so let's say you are writing for q1 uh, from this other you get the, write down the euler lagrange equations let's say for q1 that will not involve q2 so meaning no matter what q1 q2 is doing q1 does what it has to do okay so they are really independent of each other and that's what i mean by saying that these are and non interacting one dimensional systems so um actually this is very very nice because one dimensional systems are easy to understand okay and this is what i have achieved let me see what else i wanted to say okay okay now our task is to first identify what kind of system this one dimensional system these are they are all going to behave same way then the only thing which will be different between these between any two different system let me write down ag again again let me write it down it will be easier to s say what i'm i am saying so l is let's say half um q1 dot square minus half lambda 1 q square q1 okay so that's one piece then you have half q2 dot square half lambda 2 q2 square and so forth okay that's what our lagrangian is so um if i know about this system this one dimensional system let me call this l1 then i will know everything about this system also because it's just n copies of this system the only thing different between this and this is the lambda 1 here and lambda 2 here and all these coefficients right other than that there is no no difference between these uh, different dimensional uh, one dimensional systems now what controls these lambdas it is controlled by the matrix u where is that here see those lambdas are the eigen values of this matrix u right so it is the matrix u which controls them so we would be interested in knowing more about lambda so lambda i are uh controlled or determined let's say by the matrix uij that's one thing so we 
uh, need to figure out what are the possible lambda i's okay and of course uh, this will depend on uh, uh, properties of uij which is also tied to whether the equilibrium is stable or unstable right so that is one thing we want to uh, see in the next one next video and um, yeah and let me just uh, tell what these coordinates are called these coordinates qi are called the normal coordinates okay that's good now let's say you are given two different system and you um, choose some coordinates some normal coordinates which i have just now mentioned here and put the lagrangians of both these two systems in this form in uh, in this manner okay now if you do so what will be different between these two systems it will be just the lambda i's right so it is just the matrix u which is uh, going to differentiate between this system between one and between uh, and the other one okay so we need to know a little more about uh, these lambdas that's what we will do next time and i hope you already know but anyway i will do it next time that this is the lagrangian of a simple harmonic oscillator if lambda is positive okay uh i believe i have derived this or talked about this earlier but in case not i will i will do it uh, in the next video okay so as far as um, uh, la if lambdas are positive then this system has become a uh, a set of n non interacting one dimensional simple harmonic oscillators okay which is a very nice result okay so we'll uh, continue next time with more details but you can already start imagining uh, the following let's say i can um, choose to set my system in motion in such a way that not all the normal coordinates are moving so not all of them um, start moving only if some of them or let's say only one of them starts moving right and all others all other coordinates uh, remain stay put they don't they don't move okay and this way you can isolate uh, the motion of one of these oscillators okay meaning you can excite let me use the word excite you can choose to excite one of the oscillators and keeping all other oscillators uh, silent they they don't move okay they don't uh, they don't oscillate so this you can do okay we'll talk about uh, these things in more detail in the next video see you then